Srimati Radharani addresses one of her friends in this manner. My dear friend, if I cannot hear of the glorious activities of Krishna, it is better for me to become deaf. And because I am now unable to see him, it would be good for me to be a blind woman. This is another instance of disappointment due to separation from Krishna. There is a statement in the Hari Vangsha, wherein Satyabhama, one of the queens of Krishna in Dwarka, tells her husband, My dear Krishna, since I heard Narada glorifying Rukmini before you, I can understand that there is no need of any talking about myself. This is an instance of disappointment caused by envy. Rukmini and Satyabhama were co-wives, and because Krishna was husband of both, there was naturally some feminine envy between them. So when Satyabhama heard the glories of Rukmini, she was envious of her and thus became disappointed. In the 10th canto, 51st chapter, verse 47 of Srimad Bhagavatam, there is this statement. My dear Krishna, I cannot say that it is only other people who are implicated in material existence, because I am much entangled in the bodily concept, conception of life. I am always too anxious about my family, home, wife, wealth, land, and kingdom. And because I have become so maddened by this material atmosphere, I am thinking now that my life has simply been spoiled. This statement is an instance of disappointment caused by lamentation. According to Bhart Muni, this disappointment is inauspicious. But there are other learned scholars who have accepted such disappointment as being in the mood of neutrality and as being a preservative of ecstatic love. In other words, the devotee feels that actually I have wasted my life. I could have done so much devotional service to Krishna, but instead I wasted so much time. Uh, the devotee feels like that, always feels like that. It's like we can never do enough or we can never do as much as we could have or should have done. This is an example of this feeling of disappointment. Uh, we always want to do more for Krishna. We always want to do more for our spiritual master and for his mission. We always feel like, oh, you know, I could have joined in the kirtan more enthusiastically or I could have, uh, I could have picked a better tune for the kirtan or I could have played the drum more nicely or I could have done, you know, something uh, better than I did before. Uh, this is all feelings of disappointment and actually these help us to remain fixed in devotional service because if we slacken our service due to any reason then we immediately feel disappointed. So it's like, oh, why did I do that? That was really stupid. That was not very good. Uh, I should immediately correct this. Lamentation. When one is unsuccessful in achieving his desired goal of life, when one finds no fulfillment in his present occupation, when one finds himself in reversed conditions and when one feels guilt, at that time one is said to be in a state of lamentation. In this condition of lamentation one becomes questioning, thoughtful, tearful, regretful and heavy breathed. His bodily color changes and his mouth becomes dry. Hmm? We feel that, oh, uh, this is a little different from disappointment. Uh, we feel that uh, it's actually more intense. That I, I wanted to do this in my life and actually I wasn't able to do. Uh, so it's, it's more of a, a big deal. Uh, it's more devastating. One aged devotee of Krishna addressed him in this way. My dear Krishna, O killer of the demon Agha, my body is now invalid due to old age. I cannot speak very fluently. My voice is faltering. My mind is not strong and I am often attacked by forgetfulness. 
But, my dear Lord, you are just like the moonlight. And my only real regret is that for want of any taste for your pleasant shining, I did not advance myself in Krishna consciousness. This statement is an instance of lamentation due to one's being unable to achieve his desired goal. So we, we should live our life in such a way that we don't have to experience this. Uh, maybe we sh could experience other kinds of disappointment or other kinds of lamentation, but we should never think, oh, I could have spent my whole life in cultivating Krishna consciousness, but I didn't. Now I'm old and my body's getting weak and I can't do uh, the things that I used to do, but I'm not advanced in spiritual consciousness either. Oh, what a terrible p position to find yourself in. Uh, so don't waste time. If you're young and strong now, take the opportunity and engage in Krishna's service and become advanced in Krishna consciousness. Uh, don't, don't think, oh, when I, I'll, now I'll enjoy my senses and then when I get old, then I'll engage in some spiritual activity and uh, then I'll become advanced. No, this doesn't work. Uh, instead, you'll become like this. You'll become very uh, disappointed and lament. One devotee said, This night I was dreaming of collecting various flowers from the garden, and I was thinking of making a garland to offer to Krishna. But I am so unfortunate that all of a sudden my dream was over, and I could not achieve my desired goal. Huh. This statement is an instance of lamentation arising from non-fulfillment of one's duties. When Nanda Maharaj saw his foster son, Krishna, embarrassed in the sacrificial arena of Kangsa, he said, How unfortunate I am that I did not keep my son bolted within a room. Unfortunately, I have brought him to Matra, and now I see that he's embarrassed by this giant elephant named Kuvalaya. It is as though the moon of Krishna were eclipsed by the shadow of the earth. This is an instance of lamentation caused by reverse conditions. Uh, there was a moment where it looks like Krishna was going to be attacked by this uh, big elephant. But just a moment later, Balaram came and smashed the elephant with his fist, and the elephant just dropped dead. <laughs> then Balaram broke off the elephant's tusk and used it as a weapon started smashing all the guards. <laughs> so, actually Krishna is never in reversed condition. But he likes to make drama. In the 10th canto, 14th chapter, verse 9 of Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a statement by Brahma. My dear Lord, just see my impudence. You are the unlimited the original personality of Godhead, the super soul, and you rule over the most perfect illusory energies. And just see my impudence, I wanted to supersede you by my own personal power, and I was very puffed up with this tiny power of mine. Just as a simple spark from a fire cannot do any harm to the fire, so my bewildering potency was completely unsuccessful in thwarting your superior illusory power. Therefore, I find myself to be most insignificant and think of myself as a most useless person. This statement by Brahma is an instance of lamentation caused by committing an offense. It's interesting that Brahma talks about his illusory power versus Krishna and how Krishna's illusory power was so much greater. Brahma is working with Mahamaya. And Krishna, of course, has the power of yoga maya, by which anything is possible, even the impossible is possible. Okay, humility. A sense of weakness caused by distress, fear, or offensiveness is called humility. In such a humble condition, one becomes talkative, small in heart, 
dirty in mind, full of anxiety, and inactive. Hmm. A sense of weakness caused by distress, fear, or offensiveness is called humility. Huh? So everyone in the material world has experienced this, of course. Huh? And it's actually uh, um, a degraded condition. Of course, humility in, in uh, relation to the Lord or his devotional service or his representative, spiritual master, this is very good. If we can become humble in relation to them, then we'll feel actually advanced. But uh, if someone is unable to engage in that service, then they remain in a humble, humbled 